All right, so I don't normally shoot videos with my phone, but I figured if I have an $800 phone, I might as well check out the quality and see how it compares to my camera. But today, I wanted to talk about something that I know is going to be a little controversial. Uh, as you know, this channel kind of focuses on ham radio on a budget. Uh, we try not to spend that much money on things if we don't have to. Try to compromise in situations that we can. So, last year I had bought a power supply for my mobile radio so I could use it indoors. My mobile radio, if you don't know, is a FTM 100D. Uh, it, its max output is a 50 watts. And I wanted a cheap um, solution to getting power inside. Now I do have some batteries, uh, but if you've been following my vlogs, you know that one of the batteries pooped out. So uh, I had to kind of compromise a little bit. So this power supply that I bought, um, from eBay, I'm looking at the screen now, is, is a 12 volt, 30 amp, 360 watt AC to DC switch power supply. I'm gonna throw the link down in the description, um, but this this is only $20.99. It comes with a box, it doesn't have any of the wires um, screwed in. And I know with ham radio, a good power supply is important because uh, bad ones tend to cause uh, interference and noise over your radio. Well, I just wanted something easy for my little FTM 100 that I was going to be using over um, 2 meter. And uh, it worked well. But ever since then, the radio has gone permanently into my car. It's all wired up. It doesn't come out. Well, here recently, my batteries that I normally use for my HF rig pooped out on me. So... I knew I had that little power supply laying around, and I have the FT450D. Uh, it recommends a power output at least of 28 amps. So I thought, you know what, this $21 power supply on eBay, uh, I don't think it's actually putting out 30 amps, but maybe I can run a transceiver at 50 watts, and uh, maybe I'll be okay. So I hooked the thing up, and... Um, Ran it at 25 watts to see the output power, check the temperature, everything worked well. Moved it up to 50 watts, everything worked well. Moved it up to 75 watts, everything worked well. I put this thing on 100 watts of output power, this $21 power supply, and it works fine. It, it works. And uh, I know, before you go ahead and comment, I know probably a little noisier than your typical power supply. But I have tested it uh, with the web SDRs that listen to my voice. I don't really hear any humming. I don't hear anything noticeable. And I've been using it for FT8. So I wanted to show you guys just a little bit of what it looks like. This is gonna be a short video, just kind of uh, preaching about it because $21 a power supply um, for you new hams that wanna get started in HF and get your license. Don't think that you have to go out and buy a $150 power supply to get to power your HF rig. You can get started cheap and move up. So I'm just going to show you guys what I've got set up here. I'm going to show you a little bit of FT8 work. It's only it's, it's 12 p.m. so it's super early in the day. I'm not going to be able to get a lot of contacts. Um, but I'll show you guys the, the, the setup anyways. So this is what I've got going on here. I have my FT450D up here. It's currently tuned to the FT8 frequency for the 20 meter band currently receiving and if I move down here I kind of keep all my radio stuff in this cabinet down here at the bottom is the the power supply that I purchased along with a battery just in case it's a backup battery now right now it's a little warm to the touch it's not super hot um, I was playing a little FT8 a little bit earlier with it but this is the power supply itself and I've kind of got it tucked in here there's a little bit of pet hair uh, on the sticky stuff on it, but this got a little bit of tape on it. It is a little warm to the touch, and this is the wiring. So on the left side, you have um, the DC uh, output to the radio. On the right side, I have it wired into my outlet, and there's a little green light indicating that it's on. I should probably close this. But I'm going to tuck that in there nice and neat, the way the wires don't cross. And I'm just going to push in this drawer. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and try to quickly make a FTA contact. All right, so I have my radio here and I have my screen up for FT8 and uh, I don't have a whole lot of luck on 20 meters, but it's pretty early in the day, so I figured it'd be better than the uh, 40 meters. So what I'm gonna do is find some real estate here on the waterfall. And I'm gonna go ahead and start calling CQ. I'm going to show you guys the power output on the radio. So we're getting probably 90 watts out. Uh, zero automatic level control. Um, below one SDR, SWR. And so we're really getting out there uh, with that 90 watts on the 20, $21 power supply. Now, it's easy enough to say that it's working without noise. Um, just by looking at the watts. I'm not even sure if somebody's gonna come back to me or not. Oh, yeah, so we've already, we're already making a contact here, and that's on 20 meters, 40.074. And EM60, um, that's quite a bit of ways away. I'm not sure the geographical location, but uh, I could probably pull that up here at the end of the video. But, we're already getting that contact in, uh, so it kind of shows you that even though we're on this $20, $20 power supply, we're really getting out there. So, another thing I wanted to show you guys is how much we're actually getting out. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull up that PSK reporter, um, and we'll see. We'll see who heard me, but you can see that... We're definitely getting out. Uh, 90 watts, the radio is pushing. I could turn it up to 100, and I already know I'm going to get some bad feedback about using that much power on FT8. Um, but really, this is a demonstration to show you that the radio can handle that with a $21 power supply. So let's pull up S uh, PSK Reporter and see just how much damage we just did. All right, anyways, thank you guys for checking out the video. Uh, I know I'm gonna get some mixed feedback considering, one, I'm using a cheap power supply and something about ham radio, people cannot stand stuff like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and acknowledge that I know it's noisy. I know it's not the perfect solution, but it's a perfect solution for me because I don't have the money for a $100, $200 power supply. And it works for me. No, it's not optimal. It's not by any means, but it does what I need it to do, and uh, it doesn't harm anybody else. Uh, I've kind of analyzed the signals, I've checked out the waterfalls from other sources, and it's not causing inter any interference, it's simply just doing what I need it to do. Another thing I already know I'm going to get some feedback for is running 90 watts on FT8. This is a demonstration. Typically, I operate between 40 and 60 watts FT8, uh, but I wanted to see how far I could get out this early in the morning with a $21 power supply. But as you can see, we'd easily be able to do some DX. We're definitely getting it out on other continents. So yes, this $21 power supply will put out 100 watts on my FT450D, and it has a clean enough signal to exchange uh, a QSO over a continent. So this power supply works for me. If there's anybody watching this channel and they're looking to get into HF radio, uh, but they're a little bit skeptical and just don't want to spend a whole bunch of money, you can do it on a budget. This radio is a little bit, it's a mid-range radio. It's five, six hundred dollars, but the power supply is not. It's 20, 21 bucks. So don't think you have to go out and start with a one two hundred dollar power supply, uh, you know, build up. You know, if you don't have the money for it, that's fine. This is a hobby. You know, you don't have to put thousands of dollars into it, but you can. Anyways, if you guys appreciate the video, uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, still trying to put out one or two videos a week, trying to kind of get started back into it. Um, but I really appreciate all the support. You guys are amazing. 
Uh, I've never had a community like this to, to give me that type of support that I always see in the comments. Uh, there's one or two bad apples here and there, but they definitely don't outweigh all of the positive feedback that I get. And I am welcome to cr criticism, definitely. Um, I, would, I would love criticism. Um, there's been times in the channel where people have pointed out things I've done wrong, and I appreciate that. But just want to know, uh, thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers, by the way. I didn't do a special video about that. I'm kind of waiting until 5,000, 10,000. I might do another giveaway. Anyways, thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you guys for watching my videos. Thank you for the positive feedback. And I'll leave a link in the description for this power supply unit.